I'm Allison, and this is my dog, and we live in a tiny house, in an even tinier trailer, traveling the country, taking hikes, and this week, we're celebrating this general season of giving thanks and eating food, and giving thanks because we get to eat food by, well, eating some food. <laughs> I'll show you how I power marathon hikes with big breakfasts, what I eat to keep warm or keep cool, and how I make the most of my tiny trailer kitchen to just overall eat like a queen no matter where I'm camping. Then I'll do something I haven't tried before. I'm going to cook a proper fancy Thanksgiving dinner in my tiny house, in my tiny kitchen, with one burner and this weird microwave convection oven thing. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I'm not a nutritionist, so I don't know whether that's true or not, but I do know I get grouchy and sick, especially on a big hike day, if I don't get to start my morning with a hot breakfast. My average weekend hike burns around 3,000 calories, so if I'm not eating substantially before, you just don't want to know that, Allison. Trust me. I was going to eat yogurt for breakfast on the road because it was too cold to get up and stand outside and cook this morning, and I forgot a spoon. Lucky for me, I have, I think, enough calories and snacks to get me through the morning and through this hike, and I'm about 40 miles from the trailer now, so there's no going back. Dang it. And my go-to hot breakfast in the trailer is an egg sandwich with lots of cheese and, of course, black pepper. If I'm not eating that, I'm eating some other kind of protein with potatoes. Lots and lots of potatoes. And usually some fruit. I also enjoy breakfast for dinner at least once a week in the occasional protein waffle from my miniature waffle maker. I also use that bad boy to make savory waffles with fried chicken, but I accidentally deleted that footage. And of course, no breakfast goes down without coffee. Lots and lots of coffee. When I'm feeling extra fancy, I make sausage muffins with a super fancy roll of biscuits out of the can, some sausage, egg, and cheese, and you guessed it, more coffee. But it sure beats McDonald's. I burnt my toast. I got distracted talking to my lovely neighbors and I burnt my toast. Depending on the schedule I'm keeping that day, whether it's a big hike day, a big work day, or whatever, sometimes I eat lunch and dinner. Sometimes I eat lunch late or dinner early, but it doesn't really matter. These meals look pretty much the same. Some protein, a vegetable, or two or three, and oh look, more potatoes. When I'm not in range of a full-sized grocery store, I find myself eating a lot of sandwiches, but when I'm in a hurry and it's hot, I prefer a salad. Y'all, it is too hot today to even want to turn on a burner and cook in my outdoor kitchen. So I am eating for like the fourth day in a row for dinner, a big container of watermelon and a salad kit thing. And I can sit here in a national park and scarf it down before I go for a hike for the evening. However, I actually prefer to make my own salads without lettuce because lettuce really just takes up too much space in the cooler and gets wilty in the summer. So I replace bulky lettuce with apples. I don't eat a lot of snacks, but my rule with snacks is that they should serve some kind of purpose, like adding protein before a hike, replacing sodium after a hike, or keeping me hydrated in the excessive heat. Boom. Half a watermelon. Done. Ooh. I'm full now. <laughs> While breakfast is important, 
dinner might be my favorite meal of the day. For the trailer, I tend to keep it pretty basic with proteins and veggies, mostly steak, chicken, and fish, with the occasional pork. Fajitas are a go-to for me, and oh look, I found a way to eat potatoes with that too. And while we're on the topic of Mexican-inspired cuisine, there are few plates of food more satisfying to dig into after a long hike than a big pile of nachos. And I think I mentioned fish earlier? Oh my god, I love fish. I'm not always near enough a well-stocked grocery store to get it, but when I am, I always look for it. Salmon, halibut, the occasional fish taco, it doesn't matter. When you've been eating only beef for a month in Utah ranch country, any and all fish are welcome here. I like to eat all my lunches and dinners with durable vegetables that hold up well in a cooler, like broccoli, bell peppers, green beans, and snow peas. And while I do love having Brussels sprouts at home, I don't love my cooler smelling like them. I also eat a lot of shelf-stable veggies like carrots and, of course, potatoes to save the cooler space. Then, occasionally, when the mood strikes, I'll try something a little more challenging for my space. I save kitchen storage space by putting seasoning mixes, like bruschetta mix, to replace five different spice jars with one, as well as cooking consecutive meals that use similar ingredients, like stuffed chicken one day and pizza the next. Yes, pizza. Welcome to dinner. Well, we don't have dinner yet, we have to make it. But we're getting a little fancy tonight, so I thought I'd invite you along for the ride. Fancy by trailer kitchen standards is what we're talking about. If I want a fancy meal, I will drive my butt home to Washington and use my actual kitchen. But today we're keeping it like moderate level fancy. What are we making? We're making pizza, sort of. We're gonna try a method that I've never tried before. Um, we're under a fire ban, so I can't cook pizza over a fire like I normally would. The local grocery store is out of some ingredients, so we're gonna do the best we can. But pizza, pizza crust. Normally I would use frozen dough or make it fresh, but um, I'm not gonna make fresh dough because I only have one counter and then I'm gonna have to wash the counter. It's gonna be a huge pain. And then the store did not have frozen dough anyway, so pre-made crust it is for us tonight. Um, also, I'm not gonna make tomato sauce, so we have a can of tomato sauce. We did get the fancy version with like seasoning, so that's another thing I don't like to keep hundred spice jars in the trailer kitchen. There's just no room to kick around so many spice jars. So when I can get things that are already, they already have some spice to them, that's good. Mushrooms, so we can't really rely on like an oven to make our ingredients hot. So I'm gonna do stuff like sauteing the mushrooms before I put them on the pizza. All of our ingredients are gonna go on hot, except for our fresh mozzarella. Sun-dried tomatoes. I made some stuffed chicken the other night, so I had some mozzarella and sun-dried tomatoes left over. We've got some pepperoni and some hot Italian sausage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn all of the sausage into little tiny meatballs. Well, this is a pretty typical kitchen mess for being on the road for, I don't know, what has it been, two, three weeks now? We uh, gotta do something about this. Thanksgiving! Why are you in my microwave? Oh, right, because there's like no place to sit in my house because I live in a tiny house. And today we're gonna do something a little fancy. We're going to cook a proper Thanksgiving in this place. 
with very limited space, very limited cooking implements. What What is the fanciest thing we can make in a tiny house kitchen working with only a microwave slash convection oven with very limited space and a tiny fridge and one burner, one induction burner. That's all we have today. First of all, we are not doing turkey. I mean, mostly because I don't like turkey that much. Turkey tastes like cardboard, come on. Why do people have so many sides with Thanksgiving dinner? It's because turkey is so disappointing. You need all of the sides to go with it to feel like you got your money's worth for dinner. We're not doing that. What is the fanciest thing I can think of? Beef Wellington. If you don't know what Beef Wellington is, now I'm about to change your life. And then we're just gonna make a couple of sides and that's it because Beef Wellington will probably take us all day. But first, it wouldn't really be Thanksgiving without something like pumpkin-y, so I'm also going to attempt a pie in here. Hello up there, how's the weather up there? We're gonna have to get creative on the way we set up our shots because we have no space to work with. So the first thing you might notice about cooking in this tiny kitchen, okay, well, maybe the second thing after you notice the total lack of stove, is that I keep the rest of my appliances minimal. No KitchenAid stand mixers here. I'd like to maintain my muscular physique by hand mixing my cheesecakes, thank you. One of my favorite parts of making beef wellington is smelling the wild mushrooms as they cook down into a paste called tuxel. Normally I'd roast fresh chestnuts for this paste, but apparently tree nuts have been impacted by global supply chains? At any rate, after searing an absolutely stunning beef filet, it's time to roll that sucker in prosciutto and that delicious paste and refrigerate while I make the sauce. And at this point in the day, perhaps maybe get a bit sauced. Then, after I roll that cold loaf of fancy goodness in a layer of pastry, which I don't dare attempt to make from scratch, it's time to wait in agony for the pastry to brown while I hope this weird convection oven thing isn't overcooking my filet. And at $35 a pound, I was way too cheap to bother buying a backup filet this year. So hungry! Oh my gosh, it's done! It's done! After I quickly transform my upstairs loft into a dining area, 10 hours after we started prepping, it's time to eat. Oh my God, this is so good. It is everything I have been dreaming about for the last two years. I didn't get to make this last year. This is normally an annual tradition. I was camping last year and you can't do something like this in the tiny trailer. I'm good at cooking in the tiny trailer, but not magic. So I kind of just dug in here without really saying anything because I was so focused on tasting. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Cheers. I could cry. It tastes so good. This was totally worth getting up early this morning and cooking all day. We haven't even tried the pie yet. I don't even care about the pie. If I were on death row, and had to choose a last meal. I might be tempted to choose Beef Wellington. It's getting cold and it's still good. <gasps> I want more. Oh yeah, who got seconds? Mm. I really don't give a crap about the sides. What was I saying about Thanksgiving sides? You only really need seven different sides because you're compensating for turkey. Turkey, I don't know her.